On today's show, Tesla hits another major goal with the Model 3. Global car sales tumbled in October, and the new Jeep Gladiator is much more than a Wrangler with a bed slapped on the back of it. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the voice of the global automotive industry. Well, despite going through what truly seemed like production and logistics hell, there's more good news at Tesla. Elon Musk sent an email to employees that says the automaker has met its goal of producing 1,000 Model 3s per day. With demand still high for the electric sedan, that's great news for Tesla, and we hope it's a volume it's able to maintain. Speaking of production, there's more details coming out about FCA's nearly $6 billion investment in its Italian factories. It was announced that Alfa Romeo will get a new small CUV based on the Jeep Compass, which will also be offered as a plug-in hybrid. There will be a new EV version of the Fiat 500, the Panda will get a hybrid variant, and the Fiat 500X will get a plug-in hybrid powertrain as well. As for its premium brand Maserati, it will see a new SUV based on the Stelvio and a new unnamed model. The Italian press is saying it will be the Alfieri Coupe and Convertible, which will also be offered as an EV. Say, if you'd like to keep up to speed with everything that's going on at AutoLine, be sure to follow us on social media. You can find us on Instagram and Facebook by searching for the AutoLine Network. And to find us on Twitter, just look for at AutoLine. Still to come, slumping sales in Europe and China cause overall global vehicle sales to drop in October. We'll have more about that right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. And by Exxon Mobil. Car sales tumbled on a global basis in October. Wards Auto reports that automakers sold 7.8 million vehicles, down 3.3% compared to a year ago. In Europe, sales dropped 7.7% to 1.55 million units due to the WLTP, the new emission test procedure, which is taking longer to certify vehicles. Sales in Asia were down 4.8% to 3.8 million units in October, but that's because the Chinese market slumped once again, which was down 11%. Sales in North America were up slightly, just half a percent, to about 1.7 million units, and sales in South America were up a strong 8.8% in October. But overall, the industry is doing pretty well in 2018. Through October, automakers have sold just under 80 million units, which is a 1.2% increase. And good news for automakers shipping cars built in the U.S. to China. President Trump tweeted last night that the Chinese government agreed to, quote, reduce and remove tariffs below the 40% level that's currently being slapped on vehicles imported from the U.S. The Chinese government raised the tariff to 40% in July due to the trade war with the Trump administration. But there aren't any details about how much the tariff will drop. Even still, the news boosted the stock prices of BMW and Daimler, which both build vehicles in the U.S. that are exported to China. Believe it or not, there's some big differences between the Wrangler and the new Gladiator. We'll take a look at that right after this. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. No doubt you've seen the new Jeep Gladiator by now. And no doubt you've noticed its strong resemblance to the Wrangler. But there are some differences. And on last week's AutoLine After Hours, we were joined by Mark Allen, the head of Jeep Design. He discussed how the Gladiator differs from the Wrangler. For design, uh, managing the, the volumes of this was, was a bit tricky because really on a, on a Wrangler, our front wheel is so far forward for our, our great approach angle off-road, it makes the wheelbase extremely long. This is what I would call a hydraulic design. You can't, we, we started with the front seat, back seat, same as the, the four-door Wrangler, but 
that's where it stops. You can't get that rear wheel any farther forward, it runs into the cab. So the, the wheel placement, back seat, wheel placement, spare tire, trailer hitch, that's it. You can't take a millimeter out of that length. Box is five feet, six and a half with the, with the, the uh, tailgate down, so we put the bikes in the back to show you kind of a scaling element. But that's our ideal, right? Toys in the back, ready to go. Um, but managing that, and then we, we did some tricks to, to sort of hide some of that. What people are surprised with with the truck is the roof comes off, the doors come off, the windshield goes down, all that really cool Jeep stuff that we like to talk about, but that's the surprise, that and the towing capacity. It's a real truck. Its towing capacity, by the way, is 7,650 pounds, which will be best in class. But for a much deeper dive into the Gladiator, you can watch that entire discussion right now on our website, or you can find it on our YouTube channel. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.